Last month we were very fortunate to interview the legend that is Tim Paisley and Tim was the founder of the Carp Society. So this month we have come to the Carp Society's first water, the famous Horseshoe Lake, a beautiful 62 acre gravel pit in Gloucestershire and this place is famous for its scaly mirrors. Our guest for this session is Jake Wildbore. He pretty much cut his teeth on this venue years and years ago with his brother Dan, so this place has got a lot of sentimental value to him. I've been here a couple of times in the past, but I'm very much looking forward to having a good go at this. There is some magical carbon here, like I say, and we've got 48 hours to catch one. Jake's already in position. He got here last night, hasn't caught anything yet, but his rod's out and in a swim. I have secured one of the better swims on the lake right on the end of a point with a fantastic view of all of the open water at this top end of the lake. So while I wait for Matey to finish his session, he's leaving in a few hours, I'm gonna go and have a little go for some fish that I saw right up the far end of the lake whilst I was making my way round to see Jake. So rather than waste time, I'll have a go for them. And hopefully over the next couple of days, one of us will be lucky enough to catch one of these rather wonderful horseshoe carp. Well, I don't think I'm gonna have long at this, because matey boy has packed his gear pretty much all the way down. But, just gonna put a couple of pouches of floaters out. So there are fish here. Let's see if they take any. Right, well it's taken about five minutes for these mixers to drift in, in amongst the leaves. I just cocked a slight ripple on the surface, and then sure enough, a big set of lips has come out and they're taking them pretty confidently now. There's mouths coming out. I reckon I've seen 15 mixers taken in the last minute, so now the mixers have reached the fish, they're eating them. So I've got a decision to make. Well, to be honest, the decision is obvious. I'm gonna to have to risk losing that swim on the point to fish for these. I want to catch a carp and there's no way I'm walking away from this opportunity. So if someone goes on the point, that'd be tough luck and I'll have to make a decision later. But for now, I have got to try and catch one of these carp. Rod's ready to go, net's ready to go. Another pouch, I think, so they've eaten quite a lot. And that rig's going out. Just very quickly gonna rub a load of oil in here. Oh, me shot, I need that. Of all the places to drop a shot. Oh, why do these things always happen? Good sight, needle in a haystack. <gasps> yes, I have it. Jesus. Right, we're in business. Oh, he's on the top. Ah, oh, he's off. Ah, oh, barbless. Barbless, I hate you. Ah, oh, gutted. Well, they're still taking them. Still taking them. No. Ah.
Horseshoe Lake certainly keeps you on your toes. I mean, you could almost split the lake up into three where you've got, this is the top end, and you've got Winter Bay, Summer Bay. All offer something completely different. You know, Winter Bay, you're fishing normally a little bit further out, putting a bit of bait out there, whereas Summer Bay is uh, very, very shallow, certainly at the minute with the water level. So um, with the bird life in there, you, you can't really go too heavy with bait. So you're fishing kind of traps in between the weed. But the fish are renowned to move all the time. I mean, Yesterday I was chasing them around from Summer Bay, I've seen them in Winter Bay and then I've seen them last knockings up here. So then this morning they were clearly on one area, um, be it old bait, naturals, um, bosh, <laughs> that was a good fish. Um, so I worked out from the other side, ran around here, put a single on them, um, nothing materialised for a few hours. So put the lead out there and I mean out here there's no real features it's all just siltweed um, so nice long hook links little bit of bait and then as they were showing earlier they were moving more that way unfortunately there's nowhere really to fish there so I'm kind of banking on them moving back through and um, coming into the area where they were happily feeding this morning but other than that I'll have to keep an eye out on the uh, I can see Winter Bay clearly here and if there are more fish showing there then I'll be moving again. Shaking here. You drift away. Gutted. As much as it looked like there was going to be another opportunity, the fish never really took with the confidence they were before I had the bite. So one lost fish had obviously put the fish on edge and although they did continue to take mixes for a little while, after probably another 10-15 minutes they really seemed to calm down. Possibly because of the weather, you know, properly drawing on in the day now. Uh, the temperature's dropped, the cloud's come in real thick and that could be something to do with it, but they did seem a little bit on edge. They drifted across to the far margin, eventually came back and then it was the odd fish after that. And the amount of times I've spent trying to catch a single fish that's taken mixes, it very rarely pays off. So rather than waste any more time, I made the decision that there probably wasn't going to be a bite there. Tomorrow is going to be really sunny, so I think there'll definitely be opportunities back in that corner on the mixers. Um, but I had to make a decision for dark. We've got about two hours now till it gets dark, and there was one swim in particular. A couple of people have mentioned that it's done fish lately. I'd seen fish showing near it, not in it, but in and around the area, and there was a margin spot down to the right that a couple of people had mentioned seemed to be doing fish, and I'd seen fish showing short of that area, but along that same stretch of margin, so stood to reason they'd be passing there. And although I had that swim on the point sort of half secured, something was telling me not to go in there, and I decided to have a walk up that margin where I'd seen the fish showing. Um, I did see one fish down the bottom towards where I was fishing with the floaters. As I made my way up further, I had a little stand in the swim I was thinking of going in, and as I looked down the right-hand margin, I could see what looked like black shapes. I zipped up the tree, saw four fish, and that was my mind well and truly made up. You know, it's a spot I can put a rig exactly where I saw the carp, and if I go on the point, I'm just hoping that the carp will pass there. There's every chance they will, but this was an opportunity that I quite simply couldn't refuse. Not long till dark, so as always, be a rush to get the rods out, and hopefully, it'll be a decision well made. Well, literally just sat there watching the coots over the spot and then they've suddenly darted and the middle rod's gone. Um, funny enough, they stopped showing, which was 
kind of made, I was just stood there looking up Winter Bay thinking have they done the off and thankfully they haven't. I'm going to concentrate now because he's going around that corner. Can't tell if he's past it or not. Yeah. Whew. Breathe. Pressure off. <laughs> Get in. Oh, I don't know, up a 20. It's me little elf style. Twenty-five, fifteen. There we go. I am very, very happy with that. The moves paid off, and uh, I can rest easy now. Pressure's off. Pressure on Elliot. Um, but you know, after putting a bit of bait out, probably an hour or so, um, they're straight on it. So it's looking very, very good moving into the evening. So hopefully, there's a few more to come. With the fish visiting that margin regularly, I needed to get my rod out as soon as possible. So I stripped the rod down to nothing. There's a leader bound on this lake, so no lead core. I decided not to use any tubing as well. The water's very clear and very shallow. So by just having a piece of mono with nice big lumps of putty all the way up it, you've got a very good presentation. It's almost impossible for them to spot. And it's also going to be pinned down very nicely as well. So I've got that done, um, then readied my rig. Two little bits of maize with a bit of foam in the middle, soaked in real pungent flavour. That would hopefully be enough to get me a bite, you know, bright bit of yellow, the carp are going to see that as soon as they come onto the spot, especially in the shallow water. So I got the rod ready, um, but to get a rig onto the spot, I was going to use a method called the washing line, I'm sure some of you would have done it. It's a little bit of a muck about, but it does enable you to get rigs into positions that you wouldn't normally be able to. So the first step was to go round to the hole in the trees, position a storm pole, but before I put the storm pole on the ground, I wrap an elastic band around the top of the pole. And this would enable me to trap my line underneath that. And then got my spawn rod, flicked the spawn out as far as I could from that bank, walked back round to my swim, attached a two and a half ounce lead to the quick chain swivel, which is attached to my main line, which will at a later point have the rig attached to it. Cast it over the spawn line, and then went back round into the trees and reeled the spawn back to the bank. And as I reeled the spawn in, it catches the main line of the rod, pick up my line once I get the spawn out of the water that's got my main line attached to it so I grab that I then pass my lead underneath the tree if you don't have to cast the lead then there's absolutely no reason not to use a massive one so a big flat pair five ounces is what I went for I then put a nice big loop of PVA tape onto the end of my spod rod the spod rod is then used to ship the rig out over the spot and I drop it into place and then because you're holding your line you can feel the lead down onto the spot so perfect rig placement I know exactly where it's going um, because I'd seen fish there, I knew exactly where to put it as well. Once that's in position, sink the line, obviously that's when the putty comes in handy, sink the line, attach it to the pole, really easy, just put a small loop up through the elastic band, a little leaf or a tiny bit of soft twig is enough just to grip in place, and then from the swim, you then tighten the line up. So from the pole to the rod, 
the line is dead tight and well above the water surface, stops any birds and whatnot bumping into it. But from the pole to the lead, it's completely slack, sunk perfectly and well out of harm's way. A couple of handfuls of hemp, groats and whatnot to finish it off. Not a lot of bait at all. Because of the bird problems that I could well end up facing, I decided just to put a very small amount of bait out. Should they come in and trash it, it won't take them long to clear it out then they'll disappear and the same for the cart and hopefully that'll be enough to do me a bite. I'm now sat behind the rod, we're well into dark and I've heard a few fish down that way. I've only put the one rod out. Uh, I did have a little lead around earlier to try and find other areas but it is so shallow, so weedy, I just decided that you know that rod should be enough. That's the reason I've come into this swim. If it wasn't for that spot, I simply wouldn't be in this peg. So all my eggs are in that basket and I am very confident of getting a fish on that rod, you know, they're there regularly and hopefully they'll come back now the rig is in position. I've heard them out there and uh, I would certainly hope that I can catch something between now and the morning. Well, I've caught a carp and I mentioned earlier that this place is home to some truly wonderful carp. This, however, is not one of them. Probably the worst looking carp in the lake. Bent up, weird old thing, but a lovely start. One rod doing the do, and proof that one rod in the right place is sometimes all you need. Still fish out there, and hopefully I'll catch something a little bit prettier than this one. But we're not blanking. The first carp is in the bag, makes up for earlier's loss, and the night is still young. It's only about half past eight, so I've got plenty of time to catch a nicer one. Well, it's been a surprisingly quiet morning. Um, I was lucky enough last night around 10 o'clock to catch an absolute banger. Really nice scaly carp, typical horseshoe fish. Looks like a young one as well, which is always brilliant to see. And nothing materialised after that. I, I honestly thought I was going to catch more. But uh, I did hear a few show in the area, but yeah, nothing happened. So I woke up first thing and then I've seen one. So clearly they're not here, they've done the off. So it is, well, on anywhere it's essential to move quickly and try and find them, but on here, being the, the, the layout of the lake and how big it is, they move all the time. So I need to pack up quickly and go and have a mooch and see if I can find some. Smiling faces for me this morning. I was hoping for a nicer carp than one I caught last night. You know, I was I was pleased with him, but he was pretty ugly, and that is not what this place is about. But the carp I have in the net is exactly what this place is about. Beautiful zip linear, long lean thing, and uh, I've mentioned it in the past. I always leave the fish in the net for 10-15 minutes before I get them out onto the bank and do the pictures, and I use that time wisely to get the rod back in position. There's fish back on the spot. They've come almost straight back in after the bite. It's not been light for very long at all um, and you know they are here and they are feeding so I stood in the tree for a couple of seconds watching them that's all I needed to see jump down and uh, now I'm going to get this fish out because A I don't want the rod to go too soon and B I don't want that fish to get too much energy back because he's a long lean thing and he looks like he might go a bit crazy on the map so uh, yeah very happy boy very confident of another bite and very much looking forward to getting my carp out for a look. I said it was going to go and I was literally about to get the fish out. Oh, is he on here? 
proper tucked me up in the weed. I don't know if he's still on. Line angle was knackered. Uh, no, yeah, he's still on. Oh, good. Oh. I did see a half decent common down there feeding. Be nice if it was in. Oh, just keep the pressure on them, I think, in this weed with these barbless. The minute you get slack in the line, you're in trouble. I don't like bullying them, but I'd say that's by far your best bet of getting them in. There he is, see him. Oh, he's tucking me up in that weed. It's a common. Oh. Come on. Right, I'm just going to jump down. Look at that. Around his daughter. Great. That's definitely the common I saw. One of the commons. Oh, look, it's lines right around his daughter. Oh, sorry, mate. That's... <sighs> <Whew. laughs> Happy. Happy days. Double trouble. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Right, let's get that in here out. Stay there a second, mate. Lovely carp. Thought he looked good in the net. Ease up, ease up, ease up, ease up, ease up. Right. There we go. What a lovely carp. Just had a twig at me on the head a minute ago. Autumn is well and truly here. The leaves are changing colour all the time. It looks like it's got yellower since he's been here. What a lovely way to start my autumn. These are the first carp I've caught this October. And what a lovely carp this one is. Show you the other side quickly. Spinning around. Look at that. Awesome. Can't work out if this is an old one or a new one. New, I reckon. His mouth looks young. And there we go. One rod. There's all this water here, 62 acres. And sometimes one rod is all you need, but it has to be in the right place. And that spot, it's constant traffic. It's lovely and shallow, so they can't miss your bait. And uh, by the looks of it, I could get a couple more today, I think. Lovely common in the net. 
very, very pleased. It's game back. Chunky old common. Chunky old common indeed. Quality. Well happy with that. Go. I reckon he's 26, 27 pound all day long, this one. And I'm pretty sure this is the fish I filmed feeding. I've definitely seen him on the spot feeding. I recognise the two scales he's got missing on this side. Always good that, watching a cart feed on your spot and then catching him a little bit later on. That is a proper buzz. And yeah, he's a heavy one. Just spin him round quickly. Down onto the mat. Lovely mouth. Lovely, jubbly. Now, this fish has made my morning, but I want to get that rod out before the afternoon comes. Lovely and sunny today, shallow and weedy down here, and I'm pretty certain the carp are going to stack up. There's already a lot down here, but there's every chance of a lot more fish turning up. So, with a spot rocking like it is, got to get that rod back out. As you can probably hear, I'm set up right next to a stock pond with a noisy aerator, but this is a swim known as Lagoon. I've had a quick look round when I moved this morning and uh, there was a lot of fish held up in this bay. Clearly the wind's coming down, it's nice and warm and they're all sat in there. So beforehand, there used to be a load of snags in this bay and uh, obviously they used to use that a lot. It used to have a rope across it and it was their safe zone. Now there's no snags there, they still favour that area. So I had a quick look round seen their patrol routes, they all followed the same route along that far margin, coming round, 
having a little feed, a little rub up on a rock, and then back through. So I went round there with a marker float. You're not allowed to fish there, but I put it out there so just so I could work out my bearings from, from this angle, because it's deceiving. It's a lot further than you think actually as well. And uh, put the lead out there, got a nice drop. It looked about right and uh, gone round there, flicked a few baits out and uh, flicked a rod out and it's looking good for a bite. So let's sit back and uh, see if we get one. Right, well, the rod is almost ready to go. It's a bit of a process getting in position, but the rig's ready and the lead is as well. And I just thought I'd very quickly talk about a couple of things that I'm doing with the rig and with the lead. I get asked loads of questions about that sort of thing. And it's a rig that I use all the time. It's a, you know, I just use it for everything now. For a long time, I used to use really short hook links in the edge, but this rig has proved so effective for me so many times that I just decided why not try it in the edge? And I've been doing it for the last couple of months or so and um, every carp I've hooked I've landed. So because it's so versatile, it pays for me to just have loads of them tied up in my rig box. So I'm using that rig, the hook bait, double bit of maize and a piece of foam in the middle and that is to balance out the grains. I always use the balance hook bait. It hasn't got to be wafting around like crazy. I don't really like them like that, but just an element of buoyancy within it. So a bit of foam between the two bits of maize and that foam is soaked in sent from hell liquid absolutely stinks um, and to, in my opinion has lots of pulling power so that's the hook bait that's the rig and the lead i mentioned before big five ounce lead and if you're going to use a lead of that size in my opinion you have to drop it you could leave it on but i really don't think that's a good idea and in order to have a lead that i can drop very easily i take the plastic insert out from the inside of the five ouncer cut it at the bottom there's like a thicker part at the bottom i cut that bit off put the insert back into the lead, then trim it down a little bit um, at the tail end of the lead. And then I take a plastic shock leader sleeve, I think they're called, trim that once I've plugged it into the lead. So I plug it into the lead first, then trim it so that when I take it back out and put it back in again, it's sitting flush with the base of the lead. And what that gives me is a nice stiff bit at the top end of the lead for basically the towel rubber, whatever you're using at the time to connect to. And then the rubber bit at the front end of the lead, the heavy end, that's where your swivel plugs in and because it's you know it's a rubber um, for a long time people would almost bore out the plastic the hard plastic piece you'd bore that out um, and not only is that a bit of a muck about but if you put in mono in it like I am it can damage the line so nice soft bit of rubber ensures that it's gripped tightly but when you get a bite your line isn't damaged on the way out and also it comes off every single time without worry while saving you time as well so that's the rig that's the lead and now I've just got to go through the uh, the process of getting the rod back in position and I've just seen a carp nut out about 20 yards off the trees so yeah I need to get it out right now. Okay, right, so now that I'm rounding the trees, I need to swing this spot out as far as I can so I can then cast over it. <laughs> right, hang on. Let me, uh, let me just very quickly redo that. So what I meant to say was I'm just going to quickly cast this spot up the tree. Lovely. Right. Okay, right. Now we're in the swim. Big underarm over that spot. Link. Right, that now goes slack in the old clutch on. Oh, 
with any luck, I'll be able to tweak this bomb in. Hopefully this will have a line attached to it. Doesn't doesn't work every time, but yeah, there we go. I can see it. So, all right, let's put that through there. Tangle all this. Carefully get that off. Right. Weeds off. I've just got to get the lead in. So this is much easier if there's no weed. Well, there certainly is here. Right. Same again, just pluck the weed off. Right, so I've got me lead. Now I just need to secure this in place, just down the margin slightly. Oh, see this under here. It all looks a bit of a mess, but we'll soon sort that out. I'm gonna secure it to this tree. If you're going to do this sort of thing, you need to have a strong line on. I've got a £20 line on, so this is going nowhere. Right, that's secure. I'm going to go and tighten that up from my swim now. A little weed on the line, that's off. Right, so that is now tight all the way to the bank. Sort the spool out quickly. into the rest and that clutch lovely and slack so that when I'm round there it's easy to pull line off as I need it okay so we're almost ready to drop the rod in I have got my lead out the tree I've put my lead on my big lead I put my rig on and that PVA loop is quite simple double up a piece of PVA tie it to the end of your rod tip and then put the bait through that loop so that the PVA is trapped beneath the bait and that's what's holding that tight. And now, it's a simple case. Oh, hang on, the real handle's in my pocket. I'm gonna lower this in. So, line nice and tight in my left hand and then boom. PVA melts. And I'll just carefully sink this line. This is the important bit. Got to sink that line nicely. Bowstring back to the swim. The line's all going to be out of the water. But this bit here, we want that sunk down the shelf. Oh, what a palaver. It's all worth it in the end though. Right, so now I'm going to attach my line to the pole with this little loop here. On these tiny little, very soft baby twigs. I need a small piece as well. So I'll take that loop, 
grab this band. A bit fiddly this bit. Just get that loop. Oh. We're in to that loop under there. Put the twig through, pull that tight, and hopefully, as I slacken this off, well, sorry, let go. There we go. So that is fixed to the pole by the twig. Well, soft twig, I don't want to call it a twig. And we're ready to go. Hook that over that leaf. Wallop. Right, that is sweet. I can see the rig. Don't even need my glasses. But I can also see a group of swans, so I'm not going to bait up yet. I'll leave that there as a single and uh, get this rod out of the way. When the swans disappear, I'll come back and bait. Clutch tight. Bobbing on. Job's a good one. I did feel a kick a minute ago, but I haven't for a little while and obviously being barbless hooks, they could easily throw it. So I'm just waiting to feel like, see if I can feel any sort of kick. But at the minute it's not looking too good. I don't think it's there anymore, mate. It's a sigh of relief. I just stood on that bench just to get a little bit higher and uh, clearly buried his head in the weed. I didn't pound a load of pressure in and uh, thankfully he's got his head out. And he's heading out. <laughs> he's absolutely charging out there. Just make my way down here. Thank God for that. One of the levery crew, my. <laughs> Get in. Absolutely covered in clay. Seven ten. There we have it. They've certainly made me work for it today. They clearly weren't up that other end and uh, found them the other end of the lake. And uh, within an hour, we've caught this one. So I'm sure there'll be more to come. All right, let's have a look at the other side. 
Spin him round. <laughs> That's him. This little scales around the back. There we go, there's the other side. Lovely clean fish, not typically a horseshoe carp. I believe these were stocked around 2008. And uh, as you can see, they're doing really, really well. It's so good to see. Let's get him back. Okay, the swans are gone. Final stages. I must have brought 30 key of bait with me. You end up catching them over a pinch. But it's better to bring it all and not use it than not have it. Just putting the hemp and that in first. I'm just gonna dot a few grains of maize in after. Swans don't see. Rocking. The final stages are complete. Okay, so second and final evening at Horseshoe. It's been rather enjoyable so far, but it's gone very, very quiet to be fair. I've not seen a carp on that spot all day. I thought I was gonna be hauling all afternoon, but I ain't seen nothing. Fish down in the corner, there's a fella set up in there now. Uh, there was carp down there, saw probably 10 or 12 there. Lots of fish showing out in the lake, but I think there's a relatively good chance they're just spooked off and coming into this area. I'm pretty convinced. I'm gonna catch another one, you know. I, th I don't think they're just gonna stop visiting. There's loads of carp in here, and with the amount of fish I'm seeing, both out in the lake to my left and to my right, and even sort of 20 yards off the trees I'm fishing under, I can't see how more fish aren't gonna go under that bush at some point. So still very confident of more action, but quite surprised that I haven't caught any more today. But that's how it goes, that is carp fishing. Um, when you're only using one rod, you rely solely on that, you know. So we'll see what happens. I could put more rods out, but there has been pike, hundreds, loads of pike, smashing fry the whole time I've been here. And there's a very good chance I'll get cut off by one of them. And also this rod, you know, when this goes, it just plows all through the weed. It's so shallow, so weedy, that I'm pretty certain if I do get a bite on this, I'll wipe them out. You know, I'm happy with a one rod. I'm happy with what I've caught. Um, and this is, for me, this is really enjoyable fishing. So I'm gonna stick to one rod um, and hopefully the fish will turn up again tonight. Like I say, Quiet in terms of the spot I'm actually fishing, but there's still a lot of carp in the area and they're gonna turn back up. I'm pretty sure of that. So 
We'll cross the fingers. I've got one more carp tonight. That'll make me a happy boy. And uh, we can pack up tomorrow. Big smiling faces. T. Sweet tea, Sweet. That's a bite. Oh. oh, we just sat down for a first cup of tea and uh, the right hand rod again is absolutely ramped off. And he's charging around like a good one. Thankfully, I got him past that weed bed where the, uh, the other one wedged me. It's moving very slowly, this is. Come on, you big scaly horseshoe carp. Keeps playing over this other line, which is really worrying. With a lot of weed around. See over. Now he's coming towards me. Starting over that other line. Get away from it. It's always worrying when you've got a lot of weed. And if he touches, goes through that other line, we're in, we're in trouble. But using fluorocarbon, we're all right by the looks of things. Oh, I've missed this place. <laughs> What a lake, it literally it offers everything. You can do what Elle's doing, fishing close in. You can fish out in the pond in Winter Bay, over bait. Summer Bay, floater fishing, stalking, everything. Come on. Come on. <sighs> Oh, he's a zip. Look at him. Oh, come on. I'm sure, then it looked like a beautiful zip linear. Come on. No, 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 Get in. Oh, look at him. <laughs> he's not big, but he fight. Oh, he's a perfect zip -lunio. Oh. That's a f bite, boy.
23? Just under 23. Relax mate, I'll get you back in a sec. There we go. What a lovely carp that is. Very, very angry, fought like an absolute demon. And now he's beat me up now. So it's the second one. Hopefully there'll be a few more. So the rod's back out there and it's an absolutely beautiful, calm evening and quiet now. Now the air rate has finally gone off behind us. But yeah, it's looking very good. Seen a couple show out in open water, which, you know, being a shallow bay, you can imagine they will move out there in the night. And uh, the forecast is the same tomorrow. So I'm sure they'll be back in tomorrow morning. But I'm going to sit back, drink my tea finally and uh, enjoy the evening. Almost 24 hours between bites and nothing throughout the daytime yesterday, nothing throughout the night, but at exactly the same time that I had to take yesterday morning, I had another bite today, you know, just as it started to get light, pretty much dark really, but you know, it was from that point onwards, it was getting lighter and lighter all the time. And I'm guessing they're just creeping back in there first thing in the morning. So yeah, I've had another fish this morning, a mirror of about, I don't know, mid double probably. Nice carp, definitely a young fish, a stock fish. So yeah, happy to have caught another one. And I've got a little apology to make because yesterday morning, uh, like I say, I had a bite exactly the same time, the very last sort of hour of darkness, just, kind of, just as it was getting light, exactly the same time as yesterday. But that fish, I mentioned loads of times on topography that when I catch a carp, I always leave them in the net 15, 20 minutes just to get their energy back. You know, throughout the battle, they have a lot of stress. So I always leave them in the net. It's something I've always done. But I found out a couple of hours after um, putting the fish back that you're not allowed to do that here at the Carp Society or here at Horseshoe, but on all Carp Society waters, the fish are not allowed to be retained in any way. So if you get one in the net, you have to get it out, do your pictures and whatnot before you put your rod back in position. Whereas yesterday morning, I caught the fish, left it in the net for 20 minutes or so, and I repositioned my rod. So I have an apology to make. So sorry to the Carp Society for doing that. Um, I've never fished a lake where that's a rule and I just I didn't know that was the case. I knew about the leader ban, I knew about the barbless, all that lot, but that wasn't something I was aware of. So yeah, apologies to them. But um, yeah, another fish this morning and once I did the pictures of the fish, as soon as I put him back, I went and got my rod back in position. And when I went round to the trees, there were three or four fish there the first time I checked. They moved off. When I went back to put the rod in position, um, literally as I was about to lower the rigging, a big fish, I reckon it was a 30 pounder, he came right in uh, and was sat, as I'm there with the rig ready to, you know, ready to go, he was right down in front of me, probably two foot off the bank, moving around, having a little feed on the, um, on the gravel, I'm sure there's some bits of hemp and whatnot left, and uh, he moved off, I got my rod in position, and I've since been back, I left the, the boys in charge of the, charge of the rod, went back and had a look in the trees once the rig was in position, um, and I've just seen another two fish on the spot, and one of them, he went right over the lead, uh, I nearly caught him. I don't know, I'm sure he ate something, but I literally, his mouth covered my hook bait. Hook bait didn't move, so he definitely didn't suck it in. But um, yeah, very close opportunity, and because of that, I'm pretty confident of a bite, but you never know. Yesterday morning, 
after this sort of early part of the day, the fish didn't come back. I didn't see anything all day, just fish out in the lake. So I'm hoping those fish will, will come back and I'll get a bite. And we won't have a repeat of yesterday where nothing turns out throughout the day. But I'm gonna pack all my gear down. You know, really happy with what we've caught so far. Um, but I'm gonna hang the morning out, try and get another bite. So I'll fold all my gear down, get that in the car, and just sit behind this rod on my day chair. Well, good morning. It's an absolutely beautiful morning, but through the night, there wasn't any, any signs of any carp over there. Um, they clearly moved out to the main body of Winter Bay. Heard a few show, but nothing major. So we've basically been waiting for that sun to come up, penetrate into that bay, and within 10 minutes, one show. So it's looking very, very good. I'm absolutely clucking to walk around there and going out to look for myself, but obviously I've got to sit on the rods. But it's playing on my mind that is the rig sat right? Is the bait there? Um, you know, I put it out just before dark, but I've just got a chance and hope that everything's sat right. And uh, yeah, hopefully catch one. Well, as you can probably hear, I'm out of breath, but other than being massively unfit, um, basically I got itchy feet and uh, reeled in, ran round there with a few, few baits and uh, yeah, basically they're sat up where the sun's going in there, there's, it, it, the spot's, I don't know, probably 10 yards down the shelf and they're sat right in the shallows, probably 10 fish all hooked together, just absorbing that sun and uh, got a few krill boilies from off the side of them. They turned straight away, took one on the drop put another one out, another one, another one. And uh, yeah, it's just, they've just basically all started moving. Seen them go round the bay, come back, drop their heads. It's like they were just kind of charging their batteries almost. They're just warming up and a uh, little bit of bait has kind of got them moving again. So fresh rig, fresh bait, hopefully one cast, because it's quite a, quite a tricky one. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Well, after redoing that rod, um, probably, I don't know, 20 minutes, and it's just absolutely tore off, lifted into it, and I felt him for a good while, and then he's, he's either buried himself in a weed bed, or there is a snag there. Um, luckily, one of the bailiffs, Steve, was in the swim. It's it goes really deep, deep here, here, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's the old snag. So if I run around there in my fire and just grab the line, see if I can yeah. tease him out. Yeah, I've, I've held on to it, I've not tried to yank it, just kept the pressure there and all of a sudden it stopped moving. So it's either wedged behind something or it is a snag. So I've just put it on the rest, got a slack clutch, hoping that he just runs out. Um, if not where the, the swim that's closed now comes round, it's very shallow and the line is going over it. So I'm going to give it a minute and then Steve's just going to, if I hold it up, he's just going to hold the line. So obviously with the, the stretch of the, the line and the bend in the rod, he can just tease it and if, if you know, it might come out, if not. And then obviously being barbless hooks, it's, it's not looking good. Um, horrible.
As much as we would have loved to have finished this film with a carp, unfortunately, that isn't gonna be the case, but we did come very, very close. This will not dampen our spirits though. We have caught some beautiful carp while we've been here. We've caught more carp than we expected to catch. And together, we have had a lovely time here at Horseshoe. We started the film with a loss. We'll finish the film with a loss. And we will see you next month.